Hello everybody and welcome back to my let's play of Star Trek Judgment Rides. We're starting to get the hint that the Bal uh, some kind of species have been doing some experiments on the Balcozy possibly. And right now you're trying to figure out what's going on here. Um, so you could figure out what's going on and save the Balcozy from maybe tampering. Also, there's something that's going on here that's making all everyone edgy and they are starting to kind of bicker among themselves and they don't know why. And the last time I was here, a kind of particle of food came down and uh, a, one of the Balcozy came down and ate it and then just walked back out. But it showed, uh, when I scanned him, it showed signs that he was having heightened stress. So maybe we need to stun him and do some studies on him to see, find out why. So I gotta wait for it to come back. Or here we go. Looks like a Balcosian described by the data files from the Demeter. Captain, I will attempt to restrain the Balcosian when he stops to eat. Captain, I will attempt to restrain well, just sprayed something right into his face. The nerve bundle seemed quite thick. My assumption is that the Balcosian is unharmed, but will remain unconscious for a considerable time. Jim, I'd like to take him to the medical examination room next door. I want to know what that gas is doing to him. Not a bad idea, Bones. My God, look at these readings. Everything's elevated. Small wonder that the Balcosi are in turmoil. Every aggression-related hormone in this guy's body is working overtime. What's causing it, Bones? That little hiss of air was loaded with pheromones, Jim. The creature inhaled them and immediately went into overload. This must happen at random intervals when they collect the food. I hate to sound like Spock, but there's more, and it's pretty fascinating. Also horrifying. The pheromone is perfectly tuned to the Balcosian physiology. It's like somebody genetically engineered both. Didn't the Demeter report say there weren't enough records showing the Balcosian presence on the planet? Could they have been put here on purpose? It is possible we have stumbled in on an experiment, Captain. With the subjects being treated like rats, it's criminal, Jim. These are, can be, thinking beings. I'm not certain it is the Balcozi that are the subjects, Bone. I think it is us. Interesting hypothesis, Captain. What is your supporting data? It's the way all of this is set up, Spock. I can't put my finger on it, but it just feels so, so set up. We keep finding out just enough to make choices. The real question is who? Who's doing this to us? And that sounds like Kirk there talking and kind of like he's forgetting his lines or something. <laughs> and to what purpose, Captain? Why? Why indeed, Spock. Why indeed. A lot of people make fun of Kirk's acting, but you gotta gotta have respect for the guy. <laughs> and actually, it's not too bad considering some other ones there, like uh, Anakin Skywalker in Star Wars Episode Two and Three. <laughs> Anyways, let's take a look at that generator. Maybe we could find a way to shut it off and maybe save the Balcozy from further incident. Captain, this appears to be a mass storage device. The tricorder cannot tell what information it holds. We 
could use a circuit board on it. No, I don't think that. No, I don't think that. Huh, there we go. This generator may be providing power for more than just this complex. It is broadcasting power, which is causing the interference in communications with the Enterprise. I cannot tell for certain if there are receiving units for this power, because some of the readout circuits are damaged. Fascinating. What is fascinating this time, Spock? I doubt it's fascinating to either Bones or myself, but I'm sure that won't stop you from telling us. <laughs> what is fascinating this time, Spock? You tell him, Jim, I'm getting sick of this alien smarter than thou attitude. If either of you had an ounce of logic, you would be more prepared to listen to my information and possibly even understand it. Bordering on insubordination, aren't we, Mr. Spock? I always knew that no emotion garbage was just to cover. He thinks he should be in charge. Mr. Spock, I'll have those findings from you right now. Yeah, they're definitely not acting right. Captain, it appears the circuit was deliberately damaged. This would only be possible if the force field were down. Who would damage their own machinery? And for what purpose? More and more curious, Mr. Spock. Also, Captain, I am able to determine that if power is interrupted rather than shut down from this console, it will send a signal to that effect. The signal will trigger some other event. I do not know what the event will be. The readout is now fully functional. There are other locations on this planet receiving power from this generator. Most peculiar, the locations of these units are not in the database. And you think they should be? It would be logical, Captain. But removing the circuit that controls the on and off functions of this device would also be illogical. Are you trying to tell me that's what happened here? Exactly, Captain. Until that repair is made, it would be impossible to execute a proper shutdown procedure. Okay. Just to do more repairs, I think we use these wires. The repair is complete, Captain. It would now be possible to safely shut this machine down. However, doing so would certainly affect all the other equipment in this complex. Captain, do you wish me to start the shutdown sequence on the generator? Let's hold off on that for now, Spock. Captain, the generator is now okay. fully functional. Power can be turned off if you wish. Um, if I remember correctly, if I told Save him to shut it off game. now, we would have got, um... Replace previous game. Just wanted to say it real quick. Uh, something would have happened, and... A whole bunch of Balcozzi will have come charging out this door, coming at us with spears and stuff, but then we'd be important to Enterprise and now bring down our score from a possible 100 to, I think it's like somewhere, uh, well, into the 60s or 50s. It's a very bad ending, so, but now I think we could shut it down now for good. Captain, do you wish me to start the shutdown sequence on the generator? Let's hold off. Shut it down, Spock. Wow. That ends that threat. The Balcosi can rest peacefully tonight and from now on. It is still a trying time in their development, Doctor. Think of it as an adventure, Spock. Scotty, three to beam up. Captain, the power source has completed its shutdown procedure. There is no trace of the pheromone in the atmosphere. It would appear the Balkosi are free to choose their own future. Good to hear, Spock. I just hope we didn't miss anything else. True, Captain. It would be most unfortunate to pass up opportunities for increasing our knowledge. Captain, there are two signals being broadcast from the planet. The first is another burst following the same path as the original broadcast. The other signal emanates from nearby the first. It's aimed at us, Captain. On screen, Lieutenant. Subject suitable. Testing continues. Message from Starfleet, Captain. That's interesting. On screen. Interesting report, Jim. I think you were right to release the Balcosi from outside influence. No one at Starfleet has any idea who was behind all this, or what the testing message was all about. Keep us informed as you find out more. 
I've got confidence in you, Jim. I have reviewed your report from your recent assignment, Captain, and have a few comments. Uh, there's some space right here. <laughs> I am very pleased with your performance. It was a perfect mission, Jim. Your reputation as Starfleet's best starship captain is secure. Kane out. Another sound problem is that sometimes when you tra transport out of a area, the sounds that were in your last area goes back onto the Enterprise. I don't know why. It kind of gets a little annoying sometimes. Ship leaving orbit. Captain's log, stardate 6236.5. Following our mission to Balcos, the Enterprise is proceeding to Omega Corvus to probe radiation clouds. We are expecting an uneventful mission. Probe radiation clouds? What did he do to make Starfleet mad at him? <laughs> now this mission here is one of my favorites, and since I have some time on here, you'll see why. A, a, a familiar villain and or kind of annoyance from Star Trek if an original series makes appearance and is played by the original actor who played him in the original series. Message from Starfleet Command. On screen. This is a code to emergency, Captain. Three Federation ships have vanished in the Delphi system within the last month. Three days ago, we lost contact with the USS Zimbabwe. You are to go to the Delphi system and find out what's happened to our ships. Starfleet out. Delphi. Delphi system. A ternary star system first charted 30 years ago by the USS Essex. With no habitable planets in the system, the Gamma Delphi sector is known for a high abundance of ion storms. I don't think I can type that out, but... The Delphi system is not far from Romulan space. Let's not make any accusations without proof, Mrs. Buck. I make no accusations, Captain. I am simply pointing out relevant information based on the most logical hypothesis available. I would not recommend drawing a definite conclusion from it. Our orders are to proceed to the Delphi system, Captain. Healing frequencies are open. Raising shields. Target analysis. Oh, keep pushing that one. Arming weapons. Just in case if there is something like Romulan interference or something. I'm trying to look for Delphi on my star chart here. Okay. That's the right one. Captain, at our current speed of warp 7, I expect to enter the Delphi system in 8 minutes. Captain, I just started getting the oddest noise on all channels. It sounds like some sort of insect drone. Insect drone. Let's hear it, Lieutenant. An object is approaching the Enterprise. On screen. What the... <laughs> Mr. Spock. Is that what I think it is? Sensors indicate that it is an authentic Earth warplane, circa 1917, belonging to the nation of Germany. Its appearance is identical to a Fokker DR-1. Sensors also indicate an immense power source and one life form. We are being hailed. This is Baron Trelane von Gothis of the German Air Circus. I have identified you as an enemy aircraft. You have ten seconds to surrender before I blow you out of the sky. Yep, Trelane, the godlike child from the original series, is back and is voiced by William Campbell, who played him in the original series. If you don't know who he is, in an episode called The uh, Squire of Gothels, they meet this very powerful life form, but he acted very childish. And he was being very big annoyance to Kirk, trying to kill, uh, threatening to kill him and messing around with his crew like they were toys until at the end, his parents came in and rescued Kirk from Trelane's influence. I guess he finally escaped from him again, and this time, 
instead of acting like he was in a uh, 17th century Europe, he's acting like now he's in World War One Germany. Trelane, but I thought we'd seen the last of you. Stop playing games, Trelane. Leave my ship alone. We surrender. Trelane. Triplanes didn't have radios during the First World War. <laughs> Trelane, but I thought we'd seen the last of you. Captain Kirk. That is not the way for mortal enemies to greet each other on the field of battle. Of course you hadn't seen the last of me. I am Trelane, the humble baron of Gothus. Humility is not something that I would associate with you, Trelane. I suppose we're going to get another tantrum from a runaway child with too much power for his own good. Mortal enemies? When are you going to grow up, Trelane? Humility is not something that I suppose... Humility is mortal enemies. When are you going to grow up, Trelane? Not for several millennia, I'm afraid. Of course, the Baron von Gothus does not have to aspire to such lofty heights to defeat his latest victim. You were responsible for what happened to the Zimbabwe? We'll see who the victim will be, Trelane. No matter how powerful you are, your arrogance and your immaturity will always be your downfall. Why don't you aspire to lofty heights and leave us alone? You were responsible for what happened to the Zimbabwe? Was that one of the valiant pilots who is now confined in my dungeon? Perhaps you wish to join him? Sensors indicate he is closing on us. I would extrapolate that he intends to fire us. Raise shields, evasive maneuvers. Raising shields. Our weapons are blocked. This is a very, very hard fight. Despite with it being a such an old antique airplane, it does not act like it. It has full thunder beetles and phasers, I think. Fires. <laughs> Target analysis on. Target analysis on. Nice. See, I'm just blasting my phasers and nothing happening. Lasers. Yeah, 
if you're thinking what well, my ship is going to be destroyed, you'll find out what happens if you lose this battle. Some damage on his uh, ship. I can see that his hull is damaged. Oh, this battle's taking a bit long. This is going to be a bit of a long last play. Well. We have been unconscious for a considerable length of time, Captain. This is Lieutenant Commander Ellis, First Officer and Security Chief of the USS Zimbabwe. Uh, this fi that fight I don't think is even winnable pretty much in that, on the hard mode. Uh, I think we've done it as sometimes on the easy mode, and what happens is he says that you cheat in and he basically does the same thing. But, I mean, it's a ship piloted by a godlike creature. Uh, character so I guess you cannot really be expected to win pretty much on hard. Hello Mr. Ellis, where is your captain? Does it have any effect on our score or anything? He was in sick bay at the time that triplane attacked us. I don't know what's going on. What is going on, Commander, is a gentleman named Trelane. An immature child of a race with vast powers. Somehow he acquired an unhealthy fascination with human military history. Last time we encountered him, he had an interest in the Napoleonic era. It would appear, Captain, that his awareness of human history has advanced to the level of your First World War. Yeah, he seemed to study uh, species and stuff, but he studies them from far distances, so he sees them in the past. So it's kind of weird, so he's a little... I guess he doesn't know how the light works or anything like that. <laughs> if it advances any further... Not only do we need to escape this place, but we need to find a way to discourage Trelane's interest in war once and for all. How did you escape from him last time, Captain? His parents appeared and punished him. I doubt that we can rely on such an intervention a second time. Okay, since this let's play's gone long enough, I'm gonna... Save new game. Replace. Oh. Save new game. I'm gonna end this let's play here, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.